This is the 5.74 inch barreled Kenick Mete SFX Pro, chambered in 9mm. If you're in the market for a fully featured full size plus pistol, this might just be the one that makes you pull the trigger. No pun intended. Bad dad jokes aside, let's dive in starting with the tip. Up front, you have a 1 half by 28 threaded barrel that is chrome plated and fluted as well which is pretty nice. That's a heck of a way to start a video. Three features right off the top that are all pretty cool. Up top, you do have a tritium sight attached to the extended portion of the slide. So we're up top here. Just beyond that, they do give you some deep slide serrations that match its rival. That's a canic joke for any of you who didn't get that. The top cutout also being much larger than the side two. This gives you an aesthetically pleasing design as well as helps to lighten the front of the barrel to not make it overly heavy, both of which are something to admire. One small detail I love is that Canik usually puts their brand on one side and the model on the other side of this pistol. If you look closely, you can see it just says Canik, Mete, SFX, and the other side there is a tiny Pro right there, which I just kind of love because if you only look at it from one side, it just says Pro, which will inherently have people asking questions by itself. <laughs> Moving on to the chrome plated barrel, which we did get to see the front of, the back of it is also chrome plated and very shiny. It does match those slide serrations, which is nice, at least in angle and size, but Nonetheless, this will be a fun pistol to clean because after you go for a long range day, cleaning it and making it shiny again will be very nice. Up top, there is an optics cut with extra plates inside of the box. Now, you do get to keep your rear sights and they are actually pretty high off of the pistol itself, which will allow you to co-witness with most optics that you're gonna wanna put on it. Of course, the benefit there is that you get to use your iron sights in case that optic dies. Albeit, most optics have around a year of battery life in them, or more, so you shouldn't run into that issue, but if you do, it's nice to have your rear sights. On the rear of the pistol, there is a small pull cutout where the rear of the firing pin is painted red, letting you know when this pistol is cocked and ready to fire. There's also a chamber indicator right up top here, small slit, that will also slightly pop up whenever there's a round in the chamber. Moving down from there, we do have ambidextrous slide release. That is very nice, because you can shoot this left-handed or right-handed. Kanik does think about those of you who are lefties. You have the tear-down lever right here. You pull it down, the weapon comes apart, the slide comes off. And then, of course, one of my favorite features about most Kanik's is that you do have a little bit of gripping right here, allowing you to find where that thumb and index finger are supposed to go whenever not firing or whenever you are just trying to grip the pistol. On the bottom, you do have a 1913 Picatinny rail with three crossbar slots, very nice overall, allowing you to put any laser or light that you want to on this pistol. Behind the Picatinny rail, you do have a polymer trigger guard and up front on the trigger guard is some horizontal texturing, making it easier to find and grip. Inside of that square-ish with rounded corners trigger guard, you do have a polymer trigger. This is unlike some of its other Canic counterparts. However, I must admit, this trigger, maybe it's the polymer, it feels a little bit crispier. Let me show you what I mean. When you pull the trigger, there's a decent amount of take up and you hit that wall. It's very clear and very defined. When you pull a little bit farther, bang, very crisp very clean and predictable trigger with the release being, I mean, you barely have to move your finger to pull this trigger. It is quite nice. Especially when you're putting multiple rounds down range, the reset is right there on that trigger pull. Behind the trigger guard is the extended mag release. It's square with no texturing on it. Inside the box comes replacements for the mag release. So if you don't like how large this is, you can make it a little slimmer profile or even a little bit bigger. The grip itself has this same kind of molded texturing on either side with on the front being again that same texturing. On the back, however, it's more of a squared, aggressive texturing, allowing you to really keep a good grip on this pistol whenever you are shooting it. There are adjustable back plates inside that box as well, not to mention an additional magazine. In the mag well, it is flared. It does come with a metal mag well, which is very nice for quick speed reloads whenever you're trying to 
reload in a hurry. Biggest benefit there is if you're not looking to do reloads and you slightly miss a little bit, it's gonna guide you right into place. In conclusion, Canik gives you a full-size pistol with a fluted, threaded barrel that comes optics ready with great sights on them that you can retain even with an optic on it and a whole plethora of other high-end features that you wouldn't normally see on a gun for this price. Couple that, of course, with that sub-650 price and this becomes a great value pistol. One that you can shoot quickly, accurately, maybe even competitively. If you have any experiences with the SFX Pro from Canik, please leave a review below. We would love to see your comments. That is all I have for you today. God bless. It is time to end.